Hello everyone, this is Mark Sabatella from Outside Shore Music, home of Mastering MuseScore. Welcome to the MuseScore Cafe. So for those of you who are new, welcome. Those of you who are returning, welcome back. This is our, our regular series on Wednesdays where we talk about some aspect of making music using MuseScore. And um, I've, I've been sort of doing a thing, well, usually there's like a theme for the week, you know, a particular topic that we uh, look at. Um, but uh, I have like special themes and I'm doing something uh, when there's a fifth Wednesday in the month, which there is this time of uh, kind of leaving things open uh, and seeing what comes up. So, you know, you can ask me questions, but we might just get into discussions of different things and see what comes up. One of the things that certainly has come up is as of this morning, uh, MuseScore 4.3.1 has released. So um, we'll talk about that. It's just some bug fixes, but I'll, I'll talk about what some of those bug fixes are and maybe a little bit about, a little insight into the software development process. So, um, so first of all, 4.3, when MuseScore 4.3 came out, this was, um, what was it, like a couple, three weeks ago, um, it is actually perhaps, you know, usually when a, a release comes out that's only two digits, you know, 4.0, 4.1, 4.2, right, only two digits there, not 4.2.1, those, those, First of all, those one-digit releases are a big deal, and those are the ones that, like, yeah, you might want to wait to update until kinks are worked out. The two-digit ones typically are pretty good, but often have, like, one really bad bug that causes a lot of crashes or corrupt scores or whatever. 4.3 was actually pretty darn good. There really were no super, super serious issues in 4.3. But there were a bunch of little ones, and uh, pretty much all the ones that got reported are fixed now, and so uh, this has come out. So let me tell you about some of the things that were fixed in 4.3.1, and talk a little bit about going ahead what 4.4 has in store. There's still, you know, uh, it's it's not a blank slate, but there's uh, it's not settled either. So. Um, as far as crashes go, the one crash that we knew about, that I know about anyhow, that is fixed in 4.3.1 has to do with creating tablature scores. Actually, it's not even tablature scores. Scores in which you've hidden the first clef. And some tab, like loot tablature scores, typically don't show that. Uh, I think the template that people often use doesn't have an initial clef. So if you uh, have a score in which your staff does not have an initial clef because you've turned that option off, 4.3 uh, in certain cases would crash that. And so that is that is fixed. So that is the one case I know where there was an actual crash that was fixed. Um, another thing that is fixed is if you look at the list of instrument names on the left of a score, Normally, actually I shouldn't say normally, for most of MuseScore's history, if you wanted to delete those, you would right click the staff, go to staff part properties, and then just remove the text there. At some point a couple years ago, they added a thing where you could click the name of the staff and press delete, and it would go away. 4.3 broke that, 4.3.1 reestablishes that, delete as you just saw, will in fact delete the staff name. But even in 4.3, you could go to staff art properties and get it. Now, one of the changes uh, that I am most excited about, this is not something that was broken just in 4.3, it's been broken for as long as MuseScore 4 has been out, uh, is a big deal for blind uh, musicians using MuseScore, and that is if you go to Edit, Preferences, Shortcuts. There's all these shortcuts, right? Default shortcuts defined and the ability to define additional shortcuts. You see, I go here all the time. This dialog box, so if you wanted to say, hey, I, I do a lot of uh, appending of text frames. I want a shortcut for that. And then you go to the define dialog here. For the last year or so, this dialog where you can define a keyboard shortcut was not accessible, meaning you couldn't use it with a keyboard. You could type your intended keyboard, your, your intended shortcut, say, I don't know, Control, Shift, Alt, 1. Um, you could type it, but then if you pressed Tab to get over to the Save button, 
it would just say, oh, you wanted to find the shortcut tab. It would not let you get to the save button. So that is now fixed. Tab correctly moves between the shortcut and save, and then the arrow keys, as is always the case in New Square 4, move between the buttons down at the bottom. So um, this is something that um, is an accessibility improvement that I had heard about over and over again from blind musicians, and it was known as an issue, but wasn't really getting fixed. Um, so uh, um, it finally is. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and by the way, I see, Dave, you're, you're saying that you, you're keeping 4.3.0. You're, you're certainly always encouraged to keep older versions around if you can. I know it's easy on, to do that on Mac. It's easy to do that on Linux. Might be a little harder on Windows, but it's, it's certainly doable. Um, you can get the portable versions on Windows. What I would say is there's almost no chance that you're going to need 4.3.0. 4.2, on the other hand, yeah, because there's enough differences between 4.2 and 4.3 that if there's an issue with 4.3, you might want to try something in 4.2. Um, but probably there's not going to be a reason for 4. Point, to keep the original 4.3. I think 4.3.1, letting it replace 4.3, is the way to go. On Windows specifically, you will probably find it more profitable to update from within MuseScore. You know, use the help menu, say help, check for updates if it doesn't, or maybe it'll just fire up and tell you there's an update available. I would recommend doing that rather than letting MuseHub try to do the update, just because when they changed the name from MuseScore to MuseScore Studio at 4.3, it caused some sort of hiccups in the interaction between how the help menu updates MuseScore versus how MuseHub updates MuseScore and you end up, you end up, well, that's a way to get both of them installed, <laughs> is uh, that, but I don't know exactly the details of that. I haven't been affected by it, but enough other people have, and the internal team has figured out how to reproduce that. So I'm going to recommend not updating to 4.3.1 from MuseHub, but instead doing it directly from within MuseScore. That's my recommendation. All right, I am going to come back and talk about accessibility in a little bit because uh, there's a, another thing I want to tell you about Google Summer of Code. So um, if, yeah, so Dave, you probably have both 4.2 and 4.3 installed. So you're probably looking at, you probably have both icons and, and so you just need to make sure you uh, click the correct one, but probably you have both icons on there. Um, so uh, the other things about MuseScore 4.3.1 are mostly pretty minor things, but there's some that I want to see if anyone uh, can reproduce this. Uh, so in France, and not just France, like uh, in the United States, we use a keyboard uh, layout called QWERTY, Q-U-E-R-T-Y, named because those are the first six letters from the top left of your keyboard. In France, it's Azerty, A-Z-E-R-T-Y. That is the keyboard layout. Instead of Q being in the top left, A is at the top left. Um, and in French keyboards that use that layout, the number keys, one, one through nine, one through zero, really, one through nine and then zero, you can't access without shift, right? And this isn't a MuseScore thing, that's just the design of the keyboard. You need to press shift to get to the number keys. What I'm told is uh, that this uh, somehow, something about that broke some keyboard shortcuts in 4.3 for French users. I don't know if it was only if you customized those shortcuts or if it was all the number key shortcuts, like for duration. But in any case, supposedly that's fixed for 4.3.1. I don't have one of those keyboards, so I can't really tell you exactly what's going on. But I can test something because I am actually a little curious. Um, when I was just here uh, in the preferences dialog, in the shortcuts definition dialog, and uh, oh, I'm just going to use about. I'm going to define a shortcut for about MuseScore Studio. Not that it's something I ever need a shortcut for, but it's just convenient for me to do. And I'm going to make it be shift one which is exclamation point. This does not normally work, right? This does not work. Um, and that is because of the way shortcuts 
hard to find and that difference between French keyboards and the rest of the world keyboards and the way the QT libraries that MuseScore relies on works, it is not worked to define shift plus number key, uh, shortcuts. I am not saying that that is fixed now, but I am saying that will be fixed for 4.4. .4. So when I start talking more about 4.4, uh, we'll learn about it. But I, I want to try it anyhow, because I just want to see if that Azerty fix has anything. So let me try Shift-1. Yeah, Shift-1 does not bring up that uh, shortcut I just defined, because Shift plus number shortcuts, they, they are a special case so that they can work at all in France, uh, and that causes them to not work uh, everywhere else, Shift plus number. Uh, so anyhow, um, something to be aware of. All right, so let me um, dotted notes and beaming. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That is a good one. So for instance, if you wanted to break, if, if we wanted to, uh, is there a place where there's a dotted note beamed that I can show you? Um, I don't have dotted notes beamed in here. Oh, ba -da. no, that's long ones. If I wanted to break this beam between this dotted note and that 16th, you, you should be able to do it by coming over to the properties panel. And that is actually, that actually was a quite significant bug. And I'm glad you, uh, you, you reminded me about that. So if you, uh, select that dotted note and then say break beam left, well, that doesn't do anything because, uh, I, I need to select the note after it and say break beam left. Sorry. That breaks that beam, right? That command broke for dotted notes specifically, and not just the break beam, but also the join beam. So basically for dotted notes in 4.3, you are stuck with the default beaming. You, the, you lost the ability to break and join beams into or out of dotted notes. That's not something you need to do every day. I do it essentially never, but it did break in 4.3. Yeah, that was a fairly significant bug. That's fixed in 4.3.1 as well. So, um, so yeah, good call there. So, um, so yes, this is what uh, uh, the about dialog looks like when you uh, have successfully loaded 4.3.1. It'll tell you you're in 4.3.1, but what you might see is an icon on your system that still says MuseScore 4.2, but it's going to ask your Muse, it's going to ask your operating system to fire up the latest version. So it's still going to fire up 4.3.1. Probably you just have both icons there again. So, um, so yeah, the, the 4.3.1 is not a very big update, um, but it does fix some, some, you know, issues that, uh, are worth fixing and, uh, uh, yeah, it's good to have them fixed. There's another thing that supposedly is fixed, but I don't know exactly what it's about. It has to do with loops and repeats. And I know there were bugs where if you selected some measures, uh, that included a repeat sign, and then you tried to turn on the loop feature, weird things would happen. I think some of those bugs are fixed, but not necessarily all of them. So I'm going to let this go and see what happens. I'm going to see if while I talk, it's actually going to correctly uh, do uh, loop that section. I don't know that that particular uh, passage would have been a problem before. I don't know that it's fixed now, but I do know there were some fixes. Let's see if it goes like that. Ah, it did go back. Okay, so there you go. That There were definitely some bug fixes having to do with that. that this, again, was not something that only was broken in 4.3. It's been broken for a long time. So they did manage to put in a few fixes into 4.3.1 that weren't just fixing the most recent bugs, but were fixing some uh, longer, uh, longer term bugs. Um, so, uh, the, the issue with the, uh, the file names and stuff isn't about Mac or not Mac. It's about MuseHub versus standard install versus update. Um, unfortunately, there's like so many different paths by which you can install things that, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to guarantee everything works perfectly on all systems. Um, so, uh, yeah, sometimes some things just fall through the cracks. 
but definitely they have a they have a whole tests uh, array with a, a Mac systems, uh, Windows systems, and Linux systems. Professional full time testers who just do nothing but test things. Um, but that doesn't mean bugs don't happen. It is part of why it is so so vitally important that people participate in the beta testing when that's announced because then those sorts of problems can you know the kinds of problems that maybe are system dependent. Oh, it only happens on this system because of the special configuration of external drives that you have or multiple monitors or all the unique fact the unique qualities of one particular system or the fact that one person has kept every version of MuseScore around where one person has deleted the old versions or let the new version replace the old or someone has specified a custom install path but that path is is read only uh, you know there's all sorts of different things that could uh, make one person's system different than another and that's why it's so important that uh bait people participate in beta tests to help uh you know catch problems that aren't easily caught by the uh by the full-time design team so um all right so uh yeah 4.3.1 is not a huge release but i am going to talk a bit now about 4.4 um so 4.4 is going to be a relatively bigger release than uh, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3 were. It's going to have uh, uh, more under the hood changes and some significant uh, in improvements in how things work. Uh, not huge ones, but fairly significant ones that is going to make it a bigger change than 4.1, 2, 3, or 4 were. So uh, the big thing that 4.4 is going to bring, well, two big things. One is some improvements to percussion because they, they, the, uh, there is a extension that was created long ago for MuseScore 2, I think. Now, maybe it was 3. Um, that was uh, called the MuseScore Drumline extension that had you know sound fonts and enhancements to support marching percussion. Uh, drumline music and that hasn't worked in MuseScore 4 but they're going to be putting out a, a Muse Sounds version of that extension so it's going to have all these marching percussion things and other enhancements designed for drums so there's going to be some significant improvements to how drum stuff works the other kind of big change that you know so if you're not writing drumline music marching music you, you you're not going to care too much about that i assume even ordinary orchestral percussion and drum sets will will benefit from some of the user interface changes that are being made but uh it's too early to say what those look like um the other change though that's happening for MuseScore 4.4 is you know i mentioned earlier the uh QT libraries that MuseScore has long used. These are this is how MuseScore is able to work the same on all platforms on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. There's one base of code that says do this thing, and if it's if that thing is something that needs to handle differently across those across Windows uh, or Mac and Linux, it uses the QT libraries to handle that. It also uses the QT libraries to handle some other kinds of detail-oriented things. Well, we've been using QT version 5 for a long time, and it's actually obsolete. They, the, the QT company uh, stopped supporting it a long time ago. Um, uh, well, uh, slight overstatement, but anyhow, it's obsolete. It's it, it's long overdue that MuseScore muses moves to Qt six, and uh, so that's going to happen at MuseScore four point four. There shouldn't be any obvious differences as a result, but it does mean that there's a lot of things now that are going to be using a new library. It's not new; it's it's been out for years at this point and is quite well tested, but not with MuseScore, right? So. There, there's where there's going to be all sorts of quirks where we discover we were relying on some QT5 behavior that is different in QT6, and we, we find and catch as many of those during testing as possible. But yeah, when the beta for 4.4 comes out, I'm going to strongly encourage people to install it and help test it because I will fully expect there. I expect 4.4 to come out and then have more than the average number of bugs that need to get fixed in 4.4.1. So beta testing is going to be super important. So um, 
did I miss something from Suzanne? Uh, Suzanne. Uh, Yeah, you, who needs to know? So I guess I'm not sure what you're talking about, Suzanne. Are you talking about trying to go to MuseScore.com and uh, you're trying to go to MuseScore.com and download a score? It's possible you're not logged in. Um, I guess I would need to know more about what you're asking about. Um, uh, normally, you should just save files to your computer and you know publish them to MuseScore.com when you want to share them with the world, but just share... Normally, you should save all your work to your own computer. I, I don't recommend anyone use the Save to Cloud feature. Under the File menu, there is a thing that says Save to Cloud. I'm going to say, unless you are a system administration expert, do not use that option. When you first go to save a file, uh, well, I've already told it not to ask me again, but when you first go to save a file, MuseScore will ask you, do you want to save it on your computer or to the cloud? Pick to your computer and don't ask me again. Don't use Save to Cloud unless you know exactly what you're doing. Why? Because some things could go wrong that are really hard to diagnose, really hard to fix because they involve a website that we have no control over. So I will recommend always save stuff to your computer. So I don't know what is going on exactly. So if you do save on your computer and you're having a problem, I guess this is probably something about your drive. If you can say, yeah, this is, um, uh, no, there's, there's no mix up about version numbers. So that, that, but there is this, if you try to take a file created in an, in a new version and open it in an older version, that won't work. Sometimes every once in a while, exceptions are made and this version can open that version's files. But for the most part, expect that if you save in 4.3, you will not be able to open it in 4.2. So expect that that's the case. So uh, assuming that you are using 4.3 and you're trying to open something created in 4.3, the reverse is certainly always good. You can open older files in newer versions. You just can't open newer files in older versions. So if you've saved a file in 4.3, you need to use 4.3 to load it. So if that turns out to be the problem, then just making sure you have 4.3 installed, uh, like maybe you had 4.2 on one computer, 4.3 on the other. Um, uh, uh, yes, and Dave, I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Um, if so maybe you have 4.3 on one system, 4.2 on the other, and you save on the 4.3 system, but then you try to open it on the 4.2 system, you could get into you know trouble that way. But if so just make sure both computers have the same thing. So if it's all on the same computer, maybe you have both versions installed on that computer. I guess I don't know, but if you can show me a picture of the exact dialog you're talking about, that could help. Now, Dave is absolutely right that in my tip of the week last week, um, uh, in my tip of the week last week, I showed a, a way you can hack a file to try to open it in an older version. It, it is, if the hack works, you will be able to open it in the older version, but there's a reason why it is normally prevented. It often is going to cause problems because the things about the internal details of the file format have changed and the older version is not gonna handle it correctly. So in general, that is a last resort, like, oh my God, I did something really terrible and I have no choice but to open this newer file in this old version. I'm willing to accept the fact that it might crash, that it might corrupt my score, but I just need to get it open. Then you can use the tip from last week, but definitely, definitely do not use that as a normal part of your workflow. But it is in the tip of the week section of the course. So Suzanne, when, when sept, in September 4.2, no, in September 4.1 was the current version. So that's still three versions ago or two versions ago, whatever, 4.2, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. So yeah, you could have multiple versions installed for sure because there have been several updates since September. All right, so, um, so but this stuff about versions is important because yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about here is uh, um, 
a different version. And 4.4 is, I said, going to have more significant changes. The changes between 4.2 and 4.3 are relatively small. The changes between 4.3 and 4.4 are going to be bigger. So I talked about the percussion thing. I talked about the QT under the hood kind of differences, but I haven't talked about what other user visible uh, differences there will be. And yes, yeah, so install 4.3.1, that is what just came out today, and hopefully you can open the file and then just save it and everything should be fine. And then forget the older versions even existed. You can keep them around if you want for emergencies, but yes, uh, uh, open it up in four point, you know, when you get home, update to 4.3.1 and then uh, open the file and hopefully it lets you. If you get an issue about permission, this might say that it's, it's something about your actual account on your computer, like you have multiple user accounts uh, and you, you were logged in as one user and it, it, whatever. This could be not a MuseScore thing. It could be a permissions on your computer thing. But uh, yeah, once you're at your computer and can try it out and show the actual error message, we can discuss it more. So the place to do that will be in the discussion and support space within the community. So let me flip over and just show that because uh, sometimes, you know, there's a lot of confusion about where to post things. Let me just give you a quick overview of where things are. Uh, by the way, this just showed up uh, today event or yesterday events. This is a, a quick, easy way to see a calendar view of the live events coming up, you know, office hours for gold members, cafe and music masterclass. Um, so under mastering MuseScore are all the things MuseScore related. We are here right now, MuseScore Cafe Watch Live. Tip of the week is where I post these weekly tips. And last week's tip was changing the version number. It was how to hack your file, right? Mastering MuseScore 4 here, well, that's the actual course. Uh, MuseScore Chat, I, I, I create this and it's, it is maybe an underused resource, but it's there to be used. It's a chat, it's like this chat, right? It's real time, people post and reply in real time. Um, it, it doesn't get a lot of use for, you know, it's, it's there to be used, I encourage its use, but the discussion and support space is the other place where you can post things. And this is normally if you've got like a question that, you know, is more than just one line of text to ask your question, like which menu is the is is the uh, slash notation command in Now, one line little question is an easy thing to put in a chat. If it's anything longer and anything that maybe someone is going to lead to a longer discussion, the discussion and support space is where you want to be. And so this is where uh, you would want to raise that. And Walter, I don't know if you're here, but if, if you're here, this is something else we can talk about is the issues that some people have had update uploading to MuseScore.com lately. So anyhow, those are the MuseScore related spaces here under Mastery MuseScore. Mastery MuseScore 4 is the actual course. The discussion and support space is the main place that you would be asking questions. And remember, there's always the search box at the top. So if you do have a question about slash notation, you would type it into the search box and then you'll see posts about slash notation. But if you click on the lessons tab, you will see lessons that talk about slash notation. And unfortunately, it looks like there's a whole lot of fairly un unrelated uh, hits here where I was talking about augmented sixth chords and I used the word slash. This is actually looking at my video. It's actually going off the transcription in the video. But if you scroll down a little bit more, you do find eventually uh, the, uh, man, slash notation, the actual lesson on slash notation. In this case, you had to look a little bit down to find it. Usually, usually the, the top lesson hit is the good one. So um, in any case, those are some resources you all want to know about. And I do keep tweaking the layout of this stuff periodically. Uh, like I said, that events uh, calendar thing just showed up this week. A couple other things just showed up this week. And yeah, between MuseScore.org and here, um, the advantage of posting here is I will definitely see it and I will respond. 
but I won't necessarily see it in 10 minutes. I do get notifications and I try to check them. Um, but on MuseScore.org, even when I'm asleep, even when I'm on a road trip, uh, someone is likely to see it within the hour and you might get a good response. Um, so yeah, both are good places uh, for sure um, to post things. All right, so let me come back now to MuseScore 4 and MuseScore 4.4 specifically. Uh, I'm going to open up a new score here because I don't want to mess up my cafe score. And I, this isn't 4.4. 4.4 isn't in a usable state yet, but I want to talk about some of the stuff that's coming. So one of the big ones that's coming that is required a lot of changes under the hood is actually that doesn't work for piano, but let's say we have flute. And let's say that you've entered a flute note and you want this note to get louder than softer. So you want a crescendo for two beats and then diminuendo for two beats. MuseScore does not have a good way of handling that right now. It also doesn't have a good way of handling the following situation. Let me move over here. Uh, Let's say I was trying to make these musically relevant. Let's say you wanted the piano to pedal and you wanted the pedal change to happen when this changes from, let me actually add ease. So you've got this thing going on. Uh, and you want the pedal to change between the C between the C chord here and then the G chord on beat three. There is no easy way to make a pedal change happen mid-measure. There's no easy way to have a crescendo stop mid-measure unless there happen to be notes there. But what I'm talking about here is for the pedal, pedals are added in the left hand and there's no note on beat three in the left hand. And the crescendos have to stop at a note and there's no note on beat three. So there would be no way to do that. Anyhow, that is what MuseCore 4.4 is going to address. And this was one of Martin, uh, Martin Keery's uh, hot button issues when he first joined the MuseCore team several years ago. He was like, yeah, that we need to be able to fix this and it's taken this long. And Martin Keery is tentacruel on uh, social media. He's kind of the... Uh, Actually, he's like vice president of something now of the company. He's like really a, a big, a big mucky muck type. Um, but uh, uh, so that was one of the first things he knew he wanted to see fixed. And it's taken several years to actually get there, but that is coming in 4.4. And it does require some pretty significant changes under the hood. But that's one of the things 4.4 will do. But it is one of the things that means that 4.4 scores will be hopeless if you try to open them in 4.3 because it will not understand your crescendos and diminuendos anymore because they are uh, they will be stored differently in the file. So yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a big deal for people who really you know like to do interesting orchestrational things with dynamics. And Kevin, I am absolutely talking about you. So the question is, when will 4.4 come? Well, when it's ready, but yeah, okay, fall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess late fall, early winter. So I'm gonna guess October, November timeframe. Probably if you ask someone on the team, they will tell you sooner than that. And I, I am inclined to not believe that that's really gonna happen. So uh, I, that's my, that is my just, off the wall guess is sometime fall like, uh, but it, it is just guessing. I, I will tell you my almost foolproof rule of predictions. When someone in a position of authority tells you this thing is going to come out in X months, the real answer is X times one and a half. That's always the answer. So if someone tells you, oh, this is going to be ready in six months, it's really going to be nine months. If someone tells you it's going to come out next week, well, it's really going to be in 10 days. If someone says they're going to be there in an hour, they're going to be there in an hour and a half, right? Uh, this is my almost foolproof rude rule for predicting the future based on people's estimates 
assuming their estimates are any good at all. If they were terrible estimates, they, they didn't know what they were talking about. They could be off by way more than that. But even the best estimates will typically be off by a factor of one and a half. That is my own rule, Sabatella's rule of uh, life, software life cycle prediction. So, um, uh, so yeah, the, uh, let me show you the workaround uh, here uh, since, uh, since Shayana mentions it here, because it does work, totally works. I'm gonna switch to voice two. So control alt two switches me to voice two. And then you can enter half rests and uh, sure, uh, I'll enter six, zero, to enter a couple of half rests. And now I can select that half rest and enter the crescendo, select the other half rest and enter the diminuendo, and then make both of those rests invisible. And there you go. I now have that thing. And with any luck, it'll be more impressive if I put some actual dynamics on that. So let's do that. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna make sure they're in the same voice. Oh, voice, that's, uh, I'll tell you about that. That's another, that's another big one that's coming. Um, I'm gonna leave my finger up and then if someone can remind me, uh, why is your finger up? I will tell you. Uh, we're gonna put a PPP down here. Let's listen to this now. Right, so it totally did the thing. So that totally works. The invisible rest trick absolutely positively works. It's just a pain in the butt, right? So, um, uh, okay, why was my finger in the air? Do I remember my finger was in the air? Uh, oh, dynamics. Okay, so MuseScore 3 had a feature where when you entered a dynamic on a piano score, you could say, by default, it would affect both staves, and that's normal for piano. But it did have a feature where you could say this dynamic will only affect the top staff or only affect the bottom staff. It, it, MuseScore 4 does not have that feature. It doesn't have a way to make a dynamic affect one staff only. MuseScore 3 never had a feature to let you make your dynamics go by voice. So you couldn't have like voice one be one dynamic and voice two on the same staff, a different dynamic, which is also important in piano music. It's also important in orchestral music. If you're trying to combine flute one and flute two on the same staff, they might have different dynamics and there was no way to do that. Also in choral music, right? Soprano and alto on the same staff. There was never a way. And when I say never, I mean music score three didn't have it, two didn't have it, one didn't have it. 4.4 is gonna support all of that and more. Ability to control control what your dynamics apply to at the voice level or staff level. Now, that's what they, that's, that code is being worked on, is partially in place, still being tweaked. It's always possible they run into roadblocks and, and can't get it happening. But as of right now, the plan is that all of that stuff works. So basically dynamics become improved. Now, here's another thing that becomes improved about dynamics in 4.4. I mentioned uh, the accessibility uh, improvement in 4.3.1 that just came out today, right? You go to the shortcut definition dialog and it is now accessible. Well, we are now in the summer. Um, uh, and let, let me just show how to do that. Uh, so let's say you've got flute one going and you've got flute two going, and you want flute one to be forte, and you're gonna flip it above the staff. You want flute two to be piano, and it's below the staff. That's how you notate it. Um, so I entered the dynamic, but I flipped it above the staff, and I made sure the dynamic for voice one is entered in voice one. The dynamic for voice two is entered into voice two. Right now, it's just going to be whatever it is. It's either going to be forte or it's going to be piano. I guess it was piano. So, um, well, you know, I think it, the last one entered wins. It's sort of undetermined which one wins if you've entered two different dynamics. But in 4.4, it'll be possible to... In uh, um, 4.4, it'll be possible to say that, yes, I definitely want this to be this voice and this to be that voice. Um, so uh, how much of a crescendo or decrescendo? Well, this is how you do it. You put a dynamic marking in there. And then if you don't wanna show the dynamic marking, 
hide it, make it invisible. And then it will still play. So there you go. Um, now, for articulations, that is built into the program, but long term, there definitely is a plan to provide customization over the behavior of articulations. There's some code that was written a couple years ago that's in place, it's not refined, but at some point there will be a way to control that sort of thing. The amount of, uh, amount of ex extra emphasis an accent gets, how short a staccato is, etc. cetera. So, um, so I mentioned the accessibility thing about the shortcut definition in 4.3. 4.4 is gonna have two other accessibility related improvements, but they're going to improve life for everyone. So um, the, the thing is, I mentioned, I started to say before, it's summer now, right? Well, it's technically not quite. Google Summer of Code is a thing that happens every year. Google sponsors college students to work on open source software. And when I say sponsors, I mean pays, right? So you apply to be in this program. So Google has to accept you into the program and then you have to apply to the, the organization you wanna write code for. And MuseScore has participated in this program almost every year since I've been around. Um, and uh, so a bunch of people apply, typically a couple dozen or, or so apply to, I mean, hundreds, maybe thousands apply to be part of the Google Summer of Code, but maybe a couple dozen apply specifically for MuseScore. And then every year we pick uh, one, two, three, four, sometimes depends on how many good proposals we get and how many, how much free time people have to mentor them because yeah, they get mentored. They're not just left to flounder writing software, but they get a mentor. And I have mentored for this program several times. Uh, so the two projects that were chosen for this year, uh, let me uh, find the right thing here. Uh, there was just an announcement made. It was, it was actually announced uh, a little earlier, but now it's officially announced. So there are two different uh, features that are both sort of related to accessibility, but not exclusively. So the first feature that's going to be worked on as part of the Google Summer of Code is a Dynamics pop-up. And as it says, it's gonna be a quick way to enter Dynamics just by clicking on one. So you can see in the picture here, uh, it's a picture of you know uh, some music with some Dynamics. And when you click on it, it gives you a little pop-up that then lets you choose a new dynamic. And in particular for hairpins, it lets you choose a dynamic to put at the end of it. Um, but more than that, if you read the full description of the thing, there will also be a keyboard shortcut to bring up that pop-up, Control D, uh, which happens to not be used right now, conveniently enough. Control D will just pop that thing up and then you can select your dynamic from the pop-up. Possibly also even type your dynamic and have it be uh, interpreted. This all depends on how much progress uh, that person is able to make uh, on the project, but they will get help from a mentor, and I have every reason to believe that that's going to be a successful project. When I say successful project, yeah, MuseScore has participated in this program virtually every year for the last 12 years, but sometimes a project doesn't end up uh, getting, ex well, it gets accepted to, for them to work on it and Google pays them and all that, but then um, their, uh, their work may or may not make it into the program, depending on A, how good a job they do, but also B, whether uh, internal stuff, when, when MuseScore 4 was just getting underway and the, the code for MuseScore 3 was there and then it was diverging into MuseScore 4, new management people when Martin came on, et cetera, the Google Summer of Code projects got orphaned. That's this the best way I can put it. The the people started working on it, then the world changed out from under them, and the projects that year unfortunately weren't uh, usable uh, because too much had changed, and it wasn't keeping with the uh, wasn't keeping with the uh, new design that they were aiming for. So they weren't able to use uh, a couple of the projects there. So yeah, every once in a while one doesn't make it but they try to learn from their mistake and say, how can we avoid this happening in the future? And I think they've got a pretty good handle on this right now. So that dynamics pop-up 
Uh, if you click on the link there, it gives you the more information on the whole thing. Let me post the link into the chat just uh, in case someone wants to check this out and you don't happen to have the uh, Google Summer of Code. If you don't happen to have uh, musicore.org uh, handy, this is the, the post about the Google Summer of Code stuff. So uh, the so the Dynamics pop-up is going to have this stuff, and you can see, oh, arrow buttons to cycle through additional ones, uh, dragging handles and create different things. So yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that is described. This is the proposal. Uh, and maybe they, so uh, once the initial features are complete and if time permits, then try to add a feature to type the Dynamics directly, right? So there's... Uh, that is usually the case with most of these proposals. They'll say, this is what we're definitely going to do. This is what we'll do if there's time. So anyhow, this is going to make entering dynamics easier, which, as I mentioned, is it's not particularly hard to enter dynamics now if you keep the palette open and you use a mouse, but you just click the dynamic, click the dynamic. But for blind users, it's rather a pain in the butt to keep moving back and forth between the score and the palettes by keyboard it is that much harder than it is for a sighted user to move a mouse. So the other project is this one, and it has accessibility in the name, but there's much more to it than that. So um, this one here, the idea is that you can customize uh, aspects of your, your score kind of all at once to say, hey, I want my score to look like this, all at once. Now we have style settings for that, right? We have, so you can totally, if you've got a style, a group of style settings that you like, you can totally, um, in within MuseScore, go to format, save style, and it will save those style settings. And then you can later in another score, use load style to load those style settings. But it only affects actual style settings. It won't affect things like staff properties. So for instance, if you have decided that you want your staff, I can make this staff here. I can go to staff part properties, advanced style properties, and then say I want my node head scheme to be showing pitch names. Now we will find the note names are showing up in the note heads. That's a staff property, it's not a score style. And so right now there's no way to just save that and then load it into another score to convert another score to that style. You can save a score as a template and create uh, templates and then use those templates and get to reuse. So for scores you create, you can set all this up and then create new scores in that same uh, style uh, easily enough. But if someone else gives you a score and you're like, oh man, I want this thing to have note names in it, there was no easy way to just do that across all staves. So this is going to do that. Now you might say, well, I don't need note names in in uh, in my uh, um, note head, so I'm not that interested. But here again, if you go and read the full description, you find out that there's actually a little more to it. It also covers color and uh, customized shapes and colors, and there's all these different settings. Um, so anyhow, uh, th there will be the possibility also, yeah, the colors uh, to say you want to make notes uh, colored a particular way, the boom whacker scheme, colors notes according to C is red, D is orange, etc. So teachers might find this useful. You know, there, there's all sorts of things about this that could be useful, maybe not to everyone, but to a, a large number of people uh, might find a use for something in here. So uh, it's, it's sort of an interesting project because it's very specific. It's got a lot of detail, how a lot of it does have to do with color, and it has to do with low vision users for whom color might be an important uh, way of, uh, of um, being able to make sure you can see something a little better. Uh, but yeah, so all of these things about uh, choosing colors and these different schemes, it's, it's, it's quite an involved proposal. There's a lot to it. A lot has to do with working with people to have decided which things made sense to include, what use cases needed to be covered. And I haven't wrapped my brain around it fully, but I'm definitely looking forward to checking what it out. Wow, coloring based on concert pitch, wow. Um, I think some of this is under the, I'm going to get to the, yeah, this is if there's time available at the end. But anyhow, so there's all sorts of 
these are the things that are going to be worked on by students over the summer and i have every reason to to believe the dynamics one is absolutely going to work because that's like a big deal for everyone the other one the profiles frankly surprised me a little bit because i hadn't really heard a lot of talk about doing that um whereas the dynamics pop-up I've, I've known that we have wanted to have pop-ups for a long time and of course sound flags are pop-ups the harp diagrams are pop-ups the the uh uh, guitar tuning uh, setups or pop-ups. There's definitely a mo motion towards pop-ups in MuseScore. And uh, there's been a lot of requests for pop-ups for each of the palettes. So that I knew when that was proposed that that would get accepted or someone would get accepted to do it. This one kind of caught me by surprise, the uh, accessibility profile one, um, just because it wasn't something that had been on my radar of, oh, I know this is a hot button thing. But in any case, it's it was accepted. It will be worked on and hopefully uh, will be successful. Um, and I know the, the the names there. I don't know how to pronounce Anamesh and uh, uh, on uh, uh, this is, this, this name also is A-N something. Uh, let me get it right. Anaket. Um, Anamesh Anaket. Uh, so both of them have been submitting, you know, doing work. I, I, I believe that they are capable of doing this work. So that's some stuff about 4.4 and about Google Summer of Code. Um, so I mentioned this, you know, I have no... I had no particular agenda for today other than knowing once 4.3.1 came out that I would talk about it. And that led me to talk about 4.4, um, which led me to talk about Summer of Code. I've asked a couple of questions here. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's definitely the case. I saw, Dave, that you said uh, that 4.2 seems to load up as 4.3. So what's going on is you have an icon that is mislabeled. You know, somehow the, the files overrode each other. If 4.2 is actually installed, like really actually fully installed, and you actually fire it up, it will come up as 4.2. But an icon on your desktop does not necessarily fire up the program. It asks the operating system, fire this program up for me, and then you'll get the most current version. So there's all sorts of ways of, depending on how your operating system is configured, how your desktop is configured, whether you're using shortcuts, whether you're using uh, direct icons that are pasted directly onto the desktop versus a shortcut to the actual program and versus the taskbar and the, the shelf on, you know, the different ways of setting things up. There's all sorts of complexities to how that stuff works. And, um, yeah, that. So I know how to handle this on my system here, my uh, my Linux Chromebook system. I'm not an expert on how to set it up on Windows, and I know very little about how that stuff is set up on Mac OS. So um, what I'm wondering is if we've uh, um, uh, if if people have any questions about any of this or anything else, random things that I can talk about uh, before. I uh, I go because um, yeah we're, I'm 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 here at your disposal for uh, answering things. I will tell you one other thing. Um, uh, so Joanne, did you miss something about something new? Yes, four point three point one. MuseScore four point three point one is now available. So if you fire up MuseScore, assuming you're on MuseScore four, uh, it will tell you there's a new update available. And if not. If, it, if for some reason it doesn't tell you uh, a new version is available, go to help, check for update, and it will happily tell you whether you have the latest version or not. Um, can a score be started with lyrics? So I'm gonna guess you mean, can you start like typing lyrics without notes and then add notes later? And the answer is no, that is not a thing. Uh, the way lyrics work in MuseScore is they have to be associated with particular notes. So you don't have to enter the actual pitches. You could just enter, you know, random pitches first and then fix the pitches later. Um, and that is very useful if you've got a chor choral arrangement and you know you're going to have the same lyrics but different notes, right, for each of the four voices. So you can certainly enter the notes first and then change them later. Um, but you have to have notes first. That's just the way it is. There's not, 
there's no straightforward way to make it not do that. There's no, there would be no easy way to re-architect MuseScore to allow you to type these, those things first. But I, I will show you the thing I was just talking about. Let's say that, um, in fact, I don't even know how well this might work, uh, but I'm gonna find out. Let's say I enter some lyrics. One, two, three, four. And then I wanna change the durations of these notes. Well, I know I can change that to a dotted note by uh, pressing the dot, and it lengthens it and shortens the next note, and now I have the same lyrics, right? The lyrics stayed there when I changed their duration. So to some extent, you can do that, or if you want this C to be a half note, you can make it a half note, but then it eats the four. So you'd have to first cut and paste the four to the next measure, then you can lengthen the three. So you can totally mess with things that way. It's not something I'd necessarily recommend as a working method, but it's possible. But I do wanna show you a repitch mode if you've never seen it, where it says here, repitch existing notes. If I go into this mode, I can now just type new notes. A, B, C, D. And notice it kept the existing rhythm, the dotted quarter, the eighth, the half, the quarter. It kept the existing rhythm. All I had to do is type new pitches. So that can be really useful if you've got an, a soprano part and you want to copy it to an alto part and then just change the lyric, I mean, change the pitches. There's other ways of doing that also, but, but it's, that, that is a feature that I don't use a ton, but it can be useful. You just have to remember to switch back to the default step time method when you're done, or you will wonder, why can't I enter notes? Um, Dave's asking about a, one, a word with one syllable set over a long note, followed by another word with several notes set as a melisma. So all of that, I guess I'm not sure what you're asking. Is this all one note or do you mean one note with one word and then another note with another word? Uh, so I guess, yeah, so I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Um, but uh, let me at least talk about what I can talk about. I can enter uh, my whole note C here and then I can type some lyrics, control L, type my first syllable, one, and then control space enters a space into that word. And then I can type uh, two, oh, uh, I can't type the underscore right now because it wants a real melisma, but I can use control underscore. Oh, that doesn't work. Well, I can use the special characters dialog. Shift F2 brings up the special characters dialog and I should be able to get to the underscore symbol there. Uh, let's try this version. Uh, that looks more like a, a dash, so I don't want that version. But in any case, you can, uh, I can come to Unicode symbols and uh, under the basic Latin section, there's my underscore and type in some underscores that way, right? So you can get that sort of thing to happen that way. So, uh, so yeah. If that's all meant to be one word, hard, control space, and then cheese, like that. You could add a bunch of vowels to, to extend it, but that's not normal. Normally you just do this. Now when I do this, notice it is center, it's trying to center the lyric there. You don't probably want that. You want it left aligned. So I would then come over to the properties panel and click the left align button. So yeah, there's uh, certain things like that. So. Um, so yeah, if you've got multiple notes, then then that's easier, right? You've got C, um, D. So I could now type. I can now type Control L, hard, space, cheese, underscore, 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 underscore. So I guess I'm still not understanding your question. It might require you to just post an actual example in the support thing. Um, so I, yeah, I, I'm having a hard time understanding what you're asking, because this this is just normal lyric entry, right? There's nothing unusual about this. MuseScore does all that automatically. Um, the hyphen is only for connecting syllables of a single word, not for, um, 
not not for a one syllable word that has been extended. No, there should not be an, ex an underscore at the end of hard unless that unless that word hard is multiple notes. So maybe that's what you're asking. Should hard get an extender just because it's a long note? No, the extender only means melisma. Now there was another question in here uh, that I want to get to, and then I will. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Stephen, th th these sort of glitches, depending on uh, uh, how, what order you do things in, whether you've installed directly from the website, whether you've installed from MuseHub, whether you've installed by using the automatic update within MuseScore, whether you've installed the portable version, there's all these different ways, and then which version you're updating from and to. There are an unbelievable number of different combinations, and yes, it's easy to end up with extra icons and I would just recommend getting rid of those. Um, yeah, it's just life in 2024. All right. So uh, I think I have um, said what I want to, to say here. So I'm going to turn off the loop feature <laughs> and play out my music. And yeah, thanks everyone for being here. And I absolutely recommend installing the 4.3.1. If you waited on 4.3 to see if there were any bad bugs, well, there really weren't. Um, but definitely go for 4.3.1 now, because whatever those, you know, eh, sort of bad-ish bugs, like the, uh, the, the, the inability to customize the beams into the dotted notes, those things are fixed. So yeah, overall 4.3.1 is ready to go and highly recommended. So uh, go for it. Tomorrow, Music Masterclass, we will be looking at motets. So people have started submitting their completed motets. So two lines of text, lots of music. We've got some beautiful, beautiful music that people have been submitted. I think you're gonna be really impressed if you haven't been checking them out already. And we'll just go over uh, some of this music and talk about uh, the process. And uh, that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. Next week in the, uh, in the um, Counterpoint course, we move on to talking about fugues. So you'll be hearing about that in Music Masterclass over the next few weeks after that. So thanks again, everyone, and see you next time.